Hi everyone, I'm Ian Harvey, massage therapist. This is my friend Vanessa. Hello. Today we're going to be talking about the sternocleidomastoid. I've already talked a little about this in my uh, TMJ video, which you can see if you click in the corner there. But I'd like to do this a little bit more in depth because I feel like people have a little fear around the SCM that uh, people don't really work on it because they're afraid that they'll hurt people or that any, any of this anterior neck stuff can be fearful for some people. So let's dispel all of that fear and work on this important muscle. This isn't something that you'll necessarily work on every client, but if they've got pain up into the jaw, if they've got pain up into the temples, or if they've got a head forward posture, then this can definitely be an important muscle. Let's get started. The easiest way to find SCM the first time is to find it on yourself. Uh, if you want to be able to confidently pick it up, then work with it on your own neck. So, find the relevant landmarks here. We've got the mastoid process, which is feels like a drop of bone behind the earlobe. So I'm palpating it right here. It's kind of an oval structure. And then it dips down into nothingness. You'll just feel muscle beneath it. Coming down from that, We've got the two attachment sites down here. There are two heads. There's the medial or sternal head, which is more superficial. This is the most obvious head. If you've ever worked on sternocleidomastoid and you've only felt one lump of muscle, you've probably just felt this sternal head. It's much more obvious, much more accessible. This one inserts just medial to this sternoclavicular joint, so where the clavicle joins up with the sternum, Come just medial to that, you'll feel a little lump of bone. If you turn your head sharply to the side, you'll feel a tendon jump out. That's the uh, origin site of that sternal head. You can then follow it up if you want to. The clavicular head attaches to this medial third of the clavicle. This is much less palpable, but you'll still feel a little bit of kind of a fascial tug when you turn your head sharply to one side and you're palpating that medial third of the clavicle. Now, you can grab your own SCM, and I highly recommend it. If you become confident about working with your own SCM, this will make it easier to work with your clients. To do this, you can either use a pincer grip, so using the tips of your fingers and thumb, or you can use a different grip. This is what we'll use with the client. You'll use the side of your index finger here, and you'll still use the thumb tip. So using either grip, I'm going to use the side of my index finger. Draw the side of this finger out from the middle of your throat. Don't press in here yet. And then once you start meeting some muscle, press in just a bit with this finger and then reach around and grab with your thumb. If you're using your neck right now, it'll be a little bit harder to grab sternocleidomastoid because it'll be engaged it might not want to be wrapped by your finger and thumb. And uh, palpate it for a moment. If you can only feel one lump of muscle, that's that sternal head. That's that more superficial head. Now, if you press in a little more deeply with this finger and then wrap around and grab a little more skin and come around a little further, you're going to grab some meat behind, deep to, that sternal head. That is the clavicular head. It'll feel stringy. It'll feel uh, a little bit different. You might not be able to get your fingers and thumbs behind it completely, and that's okay, as long as you're interacting with that clavicular head. When you've got a client in front of you, let's start by finding those landmarks. So, in order to find the attachment sites, the origin of the sternal head, first of all, come all the way medially. We're going to come onto the sternum itself. You're going to feel this little saddle, this little uh, indention right here. That's the uh, suprasternal notch, otherwise known as the jugular notch. If you come just to the side, just a centimeter or so, you're going to feel a little knob of bone. You'll still be just medial to that sternoclavicular joint, so come just medial to that, and if you'd like to confirm where you are, you can have your client just lift their head off the table. So then let's go ahead and lift your head up, and there it is, and bring it back down. And so you'll feel a tendon jump up there, 
And then if you come out laterally, if you're on this medial third of the clavicle, you're on that attachment side of the clavicular head. Coming up, right behind the earlobe, we've got the mastoid process. Sternocleidomastoid. Sterno means sternum, clido means clavicle, and mastoid means mastoid. It'll feel like a little teardrop of bone behind the earlobe. Pressure here can feel really good. This can be great for headaches that involve the jaw and the temples. Now to work with the SCM itself, I actually like to lengthen the SCM. So let's think about the actions of the SCM. When both are working together, they flex the neck. They bring the head forward. Or they jut the head forward. They bring the chin forward like this. So if someone has head forward posture, that could be because of a chronically shortened SCM. So that's for bilateral usage of the SCM. Unilaterally, the SCM rotates the head away from that side. So this right SCM turns the head to the left. You can see it pop out there. It turns the head away from this side. In order to make this as slack as possible, you could bring your head all the way to the other side. Now this SCM is nice and short, and it should be much easier to work with. But I find if there's no tension in this muscle, that it's much more difficult to scoop up. Now, other teachers will have you have your client lift their head up, and then just go ahead and raise your head up about an inch and stop right there. So you can see the sternal head here, you can see the clavicular head here, and now you could just reach around and grab around this entire sternal cladomastoid, and then let's go ahead and let your head drop back down. But that's, that can be kind of painful for your client to go around that muscle while it's being used like that. In fact, it's painful to go completely around this muscle in most clients who aren't used to touch here. Something to keep in mind about the SCM is that this muscle is almost never touched. The client has probably never interacted with their own SCM. Other massage therapists have been avoiding this like the plague. So if you touch this SCM, you're probably the first person to have ever done so. So honor that and give the person the space for this to be a little scary. And if you come in cautiously and kindly, then that will make this a less anxiety-provoking experience. If you come at this the right way, this can just feel like a great new muscle. Holy crap, what's that? I've never felt that before. And hopefully you can help deal with some of their jaw and temporal pain. Now, I like to bring this into a little bit of tension. I like to make it a little taut by turning the head toward that same side. Once again, that lengthens this SCM. And now, I can use gravity a bit. I can scoop up under that SCM using this side of my digit here. I'm scooping up as much tissue as I can. Don't worry too much about pressing on these lateral neck tissues. Right now, we're in levator scapula country, and just anterior to that, we're working with scalenes a bit. But there's nothing too much to worry about over here, so feel free to press in just a bit and scoop up that tissue and then bring the thumb over, bring it further over than you think you need to, and then draw that thumb back, and now you've got sternocleidomastoid between your finger and thumb. For another angle, once again I've got the head turned just a little bit toward that same side, and I will bring this side of my index finger up, and it scoops up a bunch of tissue, and then I'll reach way over with my thumb, and draw some skin toward my other finger and trap that big bulky muscle. There's a lot of this muscle. If you've just felt this sternal head, it just feels like a single finger of muscle, then you've only felt a, a small part of sternocleidomastoid. Bring your thumb way over and trap some of that meat behind it, and you'll feel that there's a bunch of stringy muscle deep to that sternal head. That's the clavicular head. You'll notice that I'm not coming all the way around it and trying to make my fingers meet behind it. I don't think it needs that. This is, again, a muscle that hasn't been touched very much. It just needs acknowledgement, and we'd like to give it a chance to change its tone. 
So your first time working with SCM, maybe this could be all that you do. You grab it up and you sit there for a while. Maybe invite your client to breathe. So then as it takes some easy deep breaths. SCM can also be involved with respiration because it can yank up on that sternum. So it can be involved in forceful inspiration. And as you sit here with this big bulky muscle scooped up, you might feel it soften. That's what some people call a release, but I'm not really hung up on that. If I don't feel this muscle change, that's fine. I'm just acclimating it to touch. In fact, I'm never hung up on feeling release. I call what I do myofascial release, but even if I don't feel those releases, people still stand up feeling better, standing taller, having less pain. So maybe don't have all of those expectations that you heap upon people, upon yourself. So I've been working more with this clavicular head, this deeper head. Now if I come out a little more superficially, I'll feel some stringy muscle pass between my finger and thumb. And just as a note, I'm not using any lubrication here because that would allow the skin to kind of slip out. You'll feel this single tube, this finger of muscle. That is the sternal head, the more superficial head. And again, you can just wait here for a while. Wait for five breaths, wait for ten breaths. And then you can come out of this, and that can be your entire treatment for that first session. In future sessions, you can be a little more assertive with, with this. You can come into this more quickly rather than waiting for so long and taking, you know, five seconds, ten seconds to make that contact. And you can start working with trigger points. You'll find trigger points all along the length of sternocleidomastoid, but a lot of the best ones, a lot of the ones that refer up into the temples, you'll find in this clavicular head, this deeper head. And so find this big stringy muscle that lies deep to that more superficial sternal head. And track your client and ask them to let you know when you've found a good point. People will know what that means. Let me know when I hit a good spot. Or you can be more specific. Let me know when I hit a point that you can feel up in your temples. And you can do some little circles until you find a good point and then stick around there for 10 breaths. Wait for it to soften, wait for that sensation to stop broadcasting upward. And then you can move on either by gliding or just by repositioning your thumb. I don't like to do a lot of that angled myofascial work on this deeper muscle because it can be a little too sensitive for that. And once you've worked thoroughly with this deeper uh, clavicular head, you can come out a little more superficially and you can be a little more assertive with this sternal head. It's less delicate and you might find some good trigger points along its length. And if you pin that tube of muscle, that finger of muscle, between your finger and thumb, that's how you'll access the trigger points there. And again, stay in good communication with your client. If you do this work, they can stand up from the table feeling a lot more freedom in their neck than they've felt for a while. They'll be able to have their posture more erect than they're used to. And that can be very valuable to people. Now just as a general myofascial stroke, this is something that I like to do to finish out this work once I've done some significant, deep, weird stuff. I like to start around these origin sites, so here, here along the sternum, here along the clavicle, and I drag just a broad sheet of tissue I allow their head to turn away. I'll kind of nudge it with the thumb side of my hand. And I'm not so much pressing down toward the throat as I am dragging up toward the head. And I'm using the flats of these digits here. 
I'm trying to yank this rug of fascia. And I'm angling it up toward this mastoid process. Go slowly with this. The slower you go with this, the more freedom they'll feel when they stand up. As I get up more superiorly, up toward the skull, I can start angling the pressure in toward the neck just a bit. It'll be able to start taking some pressure. And as I get up toward this mastoid process, right now I'm just inferior to it, I can start angling that pressure in. So I'm applying pressure directly toward these upper vertebrae and toward the skull here. In other words, you can sink quite a bit more the further up you go. And once you get up to this mastoid process, you can use fingertip pressure. You can use quite specific pressure. This mastoid can take some work. And I'm still dragging. I'm still thinking of dragging up toward the top of the head, but I'm angling that pressure in toward that mastoid process. I'm dodging posterior to the ear. I don't want to put any pressure on that ear cartilage. Probably wouldn't hurt anything, but might not feel great. And whenever you're doing myofascial release, think origin to insertion and beyond. So come up into the hairline a bit. You could make this a move that comes all the way up into the scalp if you wanted to. All of this fascia is connected. When you come out of any work with sternocleidomastoid, come out gently. Come out the same way that you came in. And any work that you do near the clavicle or near the sternum is going to affect the same fascia. And Vanessa, turn your head to the left very slowly. And I can feel that fascia tugging. This is activating that SCM and it's giving a stretch to all this fascia. I'm keeping this hand here, I'm kind of making this a pin and stretch. This is a stretch that she couldn't really do herself. And come back to neutral very slowly. This is causing that SCM to go slack. And then come out of this gently. Alright guys, give this a try, let me know what you think, leave me some comments, and I'll see you next time.